It's deranged royal fay. They'll act crazy all day. They'll, They'll apologize, apologize for, for the fail, fail but still, still scream and wail. wail. It's deranged royal fay. Yeah. A letter from a friend by Emily Otto. Precious thing, I long for nothing more than to be your friend. But I am not good as you are. For I think where I should feel. And I am not innocent as you would think. For I try to turn your head. And I never stop. And I see you happy and I wish you well. But in my wish is my invitation to a different dream. And I wonder if I care for you at all not to leave you alone where you are content. And I long for nothing more than to be your friend. But if you accept my gift, you will ruin it. And I will not give you what I promise because... I can't, but I will always offer, and I will always deny it, because I have the most convenient guise of friendship. Should you slip, I should slay you, like all the others. And still I reign and say, walk my way, because I adore where I have no right. But I ask you to become worse than you are, and neglect to mention that I adore the part of you that does not love me. For I long for nothing more than to be your friend. Yet I long for everything friends will never be. I think I may be cruel. But if I harm none, I am only evil. And it hurts not to know if I am terrible or only in love. Close by Emily Otto. I had you so close, and you didn't even know. I cherished every turn of your voice, and thrilled when you laughed, and died at each awful word, which meant you didn't long to leave. And I tried not to seem too happy. You seem at home in my darkness, and I love you, because I know it isn't easy. And you are so kind, because you make me feel worthy. If You Can Only Know, by Emily Autumn. If you can only know the hurt I feel each time I think of you, you might begin to understand what makes a fairy cry. You couldn't quite believe the reasons I would give if you asked to be told the nature of my tears, and so I told you why. If you could only know how many times each day I picture in my mind the look upon your face when you begin to laugh, or how your eyes look sad, the softness of your hair, the beauty of your soul, and whatever I am, you are the other half. I cannot comprehend how I could recognize the one I've waited for the instant that we met and have known since that day, while well, you are truly fond and care I do believe, but would not take the chance that alters suns and moons and gave your heart away. If you could only know how precious you've become, how all that I create you still inspire, so you may begin to see that I might be the one for whom you were brought back. And if you never know, the chance will pass us by, and love will never be. What Right Have I? by Emily Autumn what right have I? You are not mine, nor will you ever be. I need not try to read your sign. You don't belong to me. I should not care for how you behave. What difference does it make? Perhaps some day you will grow brave and from this sleep awake. But when you do, it will not then be caused by what I say, but by one who, like other men, holds you within her sway. And as I claim no place within the life you choose to live, I'll stay the same as I have been, and all your faults forgive. Perhaps I own the privileged place, for worry I need not. I may condone, reprove with grace, and still remain unfraught, with jealousies and petty cares, and all that love demands. So as you please, I'll save my prayers, and better use my hands. But why all this, as I've said, it matters not to me. 
What right have I? You are not mine, nor will you ever be. Never Chase a Tear by Emily Arthur I've never tasted tears like these before, and though they are the saddest I have known, their simple cause is none but one of joy, for now it seems that I may not be alone. Upon this earth as I have been till now, a truly unexpected twist of fate, for I had given up on everyone, especially myself, and thought it late, too late, for any soul to cast a line. His hook would hit the ice and snap in two. But someone blew a kiss, and with his breath, and froze what ne'er a roaring fire could do. An angel now is mine, and from the start I knew that I was bound to let him in. But while I smile, I weep, because I know that something ends, that this can begin. God, what a fool am I, or am I wise? For years I have kept hidden in my heart the name of one who never had been more but whom I wrote about and set apart from other men, though never did I tell my feelings, nay, but used him as a muse, an inspiration, something to adore. But rarely did I think on what I'd lose, if ever my affections were replaced by someone living, breathing, warm and real. For while I pledged my life to him in song, the same for me, I knew he did not feel. If I could tell the truth, I say I planned to go on in this fashion for all time. I didn't care if he couldn't care for me. As long as I knew I could own him in each rhyme and have something to think about each night when torment after torment wrecked my soul to writhe in sorrow, bathe in pain's delight, to fill my pages was my only goal. Until the day I dared to call it love, for this love was the only I had known. And somehow, I could keep the rest away, for in my mind I never was alone, and being thus in love, though with a specter, I never did expect, nor wish, nor care to take another into that holy place, though in my mind I knew no one was there. Yea, in my mind, but not in my soul, I loved, I swear I loved, else why this pain? When of my will I opened the door and swept the space, where I swore he remained. And something dies within me as I sleep, as something new is born in every tear. Past years of memories I long to keep, a feature which I both long for and fear. Though really there was no question when it came, the shooting star, both fire and gentleness, who never gave me time to make my choice, but made me, made my will his own with each caress. For once and only once I did not think where I should feel, and for that I was proud. But it was one thing to enact the part, and something else to say the word aloud. For once I had, I felt a shadow fade, which over me had hung for all these years. And no true loss in all the world could match the sense of someone passing with my tears. I hadn't known until then how lost I was, enveloped in this mist of my design, so much of my news had thus become, that in my eyes no star was seen to shine, unless it bore some of my phantom's light, or carried strains of music in the beams, until my soul was open to the view, no man could enter except in my dreams. It's over now, and I'm not afraid. I know full well what I am meant to do, but late at night, when I recall my muse, I cry for us, as though he never knew, that I had waited years to hear my name, once spoken as it should have always been. I'd wait there still, but someone real appeared, and stole the heart that no man could hope to win. If to my muse I'd ever say hello, it might not hurt this much to say goodbye. But there is something tragic in this scene, which may appear joyous to the eye of any one who witnesses myself, bound in the arms and lips of my new friend, complete in a way I'd never been, and healing wounds I thought would never mend. The truth that shattered my reality, the soul I'd dreamed but never thought I'd meet, and now I don't look back except in dreams. Yet, when I do, the pain 
is always sweet, for only pain could show me who I was, and from that child to me how much I've grown. I've never tasted tears like these before, and yet they are the saddest I have ever known. Well, they're glad that you stayed, but you wasted yet another day. Their videos are a bore, but they've got lots more in store. It's deranged. Royal Faye. Yeah.